Hello, welcome Ontario UK to my London home. I'm Brian Wolf, a London-based Irish interior designer. Uh, come on in and I'll show you around. I was my own worst client. Uh, taking my own design brief was hell. Um, narrowed it down to a few things. So having no white, so that you won't find any white in the space, it's all color. And creating a space that was inviting and safe for my friends to come and hang out and be entertained in after a long day in the office. So the kitchen was one of the most important parts of the home for me. And we design incredible kitchens for our clients. They're always full of gadgets and gizmos. And I wanted them all naturally for myself. Um, I wanted a space where we could relax and chill out in the evening. Somebody could be cooking, others could be sitting at the bar. It's been designed around having multiple people in the space at any one time. So in terms of the level of specification for the appliances in the kitchen, it was really important for me to not have an overhead extractor fan in my kitchen. I don't like them, they're not aesthetically pleasing in an open plan kitchen living dining space. So going for a downdraft system meant we had clean surfaces and we didn't have something hanging from the ceiling that was an obstruction and sort of broke the, the, the essence of a, an open plan kitchen living dining. We cook a lot at home and entertain a lot as well. So uh, having a plumbed in steam oven, the oven with rotisserie and a baking stone for our pizzas was really important. But I made the decision to go with a vacuum sealing drawer because I do a lot of sous vide cooking instead of a warming drawer and couldn't be happier that I made that decision. And then to declutter the space, things that we would naturally use in all of our projects, you know, a uh, hot tap so it's boiling, sparkling water, filtered water in your normal hot and cold, just keeps the surfaces a little cleaner in a London apartment. I wanted to showcase a blend of materials in, in the kitchen rather than sticking the standard finishes. We look to specialist decorative ateliers to uh, apply different finishes to our drawers. This was inspired more by natural materials. This is a sort of a bronze metal hand applied finish. The marbles that we have chosen uh, have inspired the rest of the color theme in, in the open plan kitchen living dining. So these reds and the greens are brought through in the fabrics that we've chosen elsewhere in the room. People say, don't use marbles in your kitchen. If you treat them correctly and you apply more modern um, sealants to them, they're essentially bomb proof. And, you can get away with doing anything in your kitchen and not worry about it. This bay window was what sold the apartment to me in the first place. When I walked in and I saw these incredible views onto the communal gardens, I was sold as a farmer at heart and having grown up in the countryside, being connected to the outdoors is really important to me. It was Equally important that we then make this the main living and daytime space in the apartment. So we have this custom banquette seating. So we've actually used, I kid you not, incontinence pads and sheets under the fabrics so that if anybody spills anything or the dogs have an accident, it's easily cleaned and it has a, a longevity that we wouldn't have if we had traditional upholstery. Um, it's been designed so it's comfortable to sit at and work at with your laptop and take calls if you're working from home, but equally for friends and family to sit here and unwind for hours in the evening. So as a designer, one of the things I like to do is blend old and new. That doesn't always mean buying old furniture. It can be old antique accessories like these candlesticks that have their own patina and age, much like the metals that we have uh, in the kitchen and throughout the apartment, um, but also quick finds like these dining chairs that I found on Vinterior just to break the space and, and not have this constant newness um, of new furniture and new upholstery. Um, the organic materials, again, more marble. Um, we had an incredible day out at the stone yard choosing the marbles for the apartment. Uh, I think we selected three and then we decided where we wanted to use them afterwards. And then this incredible pendant that's from a, a London-based studio. Uh, it's made and designed here in London. And I loved the material choices of it. It's got this coarse, rough texture almost like it's quartz and steel. I think it sort of frames the whole space and gives it its own, its own defined look and feel um, when you come into the room. What respectable Irishman doesn't have a bar? It was really important for me, for my guests, to feel welcomed when they walk into the space. And what better way to make them feel like they're, they're wanted than to have a bar on display. So when my guests walk through the door into the kitchen, living, dining area, they're greeted by a bar. And I can tell you now, all of my friends know where to go on arrival. So the bar area, they're really demonstrative uh, elements either side of the fireplace. And one way of breaking this up was to play with the different materials and the finishes of the materials. So the bird oak gives it a really nice flowery, lively pattern. So your eye can rest on that when you're focusing on it. We have our traditional 
crown cut oak shelves. It's what you expect, but you know, this dark smoke stain on it sets it apart from the elements you see behind. And then to give it a bit of relief, we have these textured fluted doors at the bottom, just to give something visually interesting uh, at the lower of the shelves. And then when dressing it, it was blending old with new, so vintage finds like this cocktail set and vintage glassware and silverware punctuated with the drinks uh, and new books and new objects and family photos sort of is how I approach the dressing of the bar. I think I have two pet hates when it comes to designing living spaces. Uh, a lot of people shy away from oversizing furniture. Uh, for me, it's really important that if you can entertain eight or 10 people for dinner, your living room should accommodate eight to 10 people. My second pet hate is TVs. A lot of designers and other clients want to shy away from a TV. Ultimately, we all watch TV. We're all watching our, our movies on a Friday or a Saturday night or a reality TV. So the TV needs to be correctly placed, the correct size for your viewing position at the correct height. Here we've matched the width of it with the fireplace. Again, fireplace was a custom piece and one of the pieces of marble that we sourced early in the project and we didn't know how we wanted to use it. Um, and then framed it all with the joinery either side. The pendant is a, a 1950s Italian pendant. I believe it came from an old hotel and we found it through an antiques dealer here in London. The artwork behind me, weirdly, we purchased to fit the space based on the interiors and it was meant to be a filler piece because we ran out of money but we love it and it's staying and it's not going anywhere and again to dressing the shelves so it's a mixture of old and new um, but one tip is put items that resonate with you and your personality you know books that you're interested in objects that you like to collect you know I love collecting pieces of glassware uh, and glassware that I'm not afraid to use so whether it's uh, crystal tumblers and uh, and drinks glasses or if it's silver barware I think that's how you can personalize a space and then bring it to life with some biophilic design there's a trend name for you just be careful when purchasing and selecting your plants make sure they're suitable for the space make sure you can keep them alive um, and choose the right uh, containers and vessels to display them in a lot of the inspiration for the colors in this space came from the marble in the kitchen. So we have the, the red tones and the green mohair fabric that's on the swivel chair are all inspired by the colors of the marble. I wanted it to feel really warm and really inviting. So it was natural uh, for me to gravitate towards a velvet. It's also fairly practical with the dogs. And again, like with the banquette, we've actually used incontinence sheets to line the cushions of the sofa. So that if there are any accidents or dogs being dogs, uh, everything is easy to remedy and everything is easy to clean afterwards. So welcome to London Living where every square foot costs a fortune in uh, this city. It was really important to have a sense of arrival. So somewhere to put your bag down, your keys down, sit down, take your shoes off. Uh, when you come home. Lots of storage, so this whole wall was custom designed to have ample storage for coats, shoes, bags, the all important uh, utility area, so washing machine, dryer, iron, uh, all of your cleaning products are put away. And then to simplify this entranceway, I wanted to hide the door to the powder room, so this is all built in, uh, and this concealed door takes you into the powder room. So one of my favorite things to do is to check out toilets when I go to new restaurants and new bars just to see what they have done, uh, especially in members clubs in London because they have huge budgets and incredible materials. So for my own home, I wanted to create something that was memorable for my guests. So I've gone with really dark, rich red walls, stone on the floors and on the walls, a really nice pop from an American photographer on the walls here with this photograph that's correctly lit. And I just wanted my clients and my guests when they visit to uh, remember the space. So welcome to my bedroom. This room, uh, this took a lot of design detailing. Uh, it's north facing, so that inspired the color choice. So we went for warm colors with a yellow undertone to sort of warm the space up. And it's, it's on all of the, the woodwork, skirtings, architraves, doors, the walls, across the cornice and across the ceiling to sort of encapsulate the space. And then it was bringing in natural materials like the woods that you have seen in the kitchen and in the living room. So again, there were three different stains in the woods here. So that was just to sort of make it a little more warm and cozy. Layering it with texture and pattern was important just to make it feel cozy and inviting. So more velvets, similar to what you had seen in the living room. Uh, texture and pattern on the cushions, on the bedspread, and also on the curtains. 
The curtains are interlined with a blackout acoustic liner and that's to help with uh, any ambient noise from the street side because we are in London. Art was another great way of introducing texture. So again, we have this incredible piece from a Chilean artist. So come with me and I will show you the ensuite. It's the final part of the tour today. So who doesn't love a day in the spa? And that was my starting point for my ensuite. I wanted something really calm, really relaxing and something quite minimal. So using these really large format ceramic tiles um, inspired by limestone and by nature, uh, they encapsulate almost the entire room, minimal grout lines, minimal maintenance. Um, I wanted a really lush and inviting shower. So size was really important for me, being able to stand in the shower, deep shelving uh, with decent height for bottles of shampoos and uh, body washes, as opposed to you know these tiny unusable decorative niches that you see in a lot of properties. And then to tie the space back into the rest of the property, the sort of natural wood fronted ribbed doors in this bathroom, again, natural materials, a natural limestone with uh, the correct sealant used on top of it, just to, to bring it all together. And one tip for when you're designing your bathroom storage, make sure your cabinets are extra deep. Your wash bags or travel wash bags don't fit into these small, thin storage cabinets. I hate this question and I get asked it a lot. I hate talking about trends in interiors because I don't believe in them. I think you, you just need to go with your gut and, and design a space that works for you. Design a space that functions practically for you or you and your family or you and your friends. More importantly, inject your personality, whether that's pictures or art that you've collected or objet that you've collected on your travels design a space that reflects your personality, otherwise it'll always feel like a shovel. Walking the dogs. And if you can't catch me walking the dogs, you'll catch me on Instagram. We've got two handles. We've got Design by Wolf, which is for our finished portfolio pieces, for you to look through our portfolio and the work that we've done. And then our, our newly created uh, Brian Wolf uh, Instagram handle, which is where you can find behind the scenes and a bit of the lifestyle, restaurants and bars, and some of the work we're doing in the studio that doesn't make it onto the portfolio page.